This is the new Fujifilm X106, and we're going to be reviewing it, going over the features, and also comparing it to the previous X105. These are compact cameras with many amazing, unique features that you can't get in your interchangeable lens camera. In fact, I think for a lot of people who already have a high-end camera, this is the perfect camera to take with you. Like, it fits in your pocket, it fits in your purse. It makes you see the world different because it's got this hybrid optical electronic viewfinder, and the new one has cool technical features like 40 megapixels and stabilization. Yeah. We'll tell you all about it because some of it works great and some of it doesn't. Also, this X105 is actually mine. This is my fun camera. Mm -hmm. So I'll be talking about if I think I should upgrade to the X106. But first we want to talk about our sponsor, KEH. If you're thinking about getting a used camera, you can get great deals and they have a huge inventory. In fact, they have a bunch of the X100 right now. So you can go check it out and make sure that you're one of the first to get them if you want that. We also have a coupon code if you're looking to save 5%. It's right here, but it's always changing. So if you want the up-to-date one, look in our description and make sure you're getting the newest coupon. Uh, check out KEH. You can't go wrong. They have a warranty. They inspect everything. So thanks KEH for selling great gear and for making this video possible. Let's get started. Yeah. These cameras have a cult following. This is already selling on the secondhand market for $2,600. It's a $1,600 camera. So why are people so obsessed with these? They are not the sharpest cameras. They don't produce the best image quality. In fact, they don't even produce the best image quality for the size. I think there's Sony's that do a better job at that and are smaller. But there's this combination of traits that make this camera really fun to use. And if you love it, you love it. Some of those are the fact that you can get a full tactile experience because you can change all of your settings with these dials and knobs and you never have to go into your menus if you don't want to. You can do your shutter speed here or auto, your ISO here or auto, and even with the aperture on the lens ring, you can change the aperture there or go full auto there as well. So it's super easy to use. Also, it's compact enough where you can bring it anywhere with you. I can stick this in my bag. I can stick it in my coat pocket so you can bring it anywhere and you're not compromising on looks. Wherever I bring this, people say, oh, you're shooting film. I have so many people approach me and say that because it's cute, it's classic, and it's stylish. So you really don't feel like a nerdy tourist just carrying it around. It's a little bit artsy. And not to mention the fun experience of the workflow. I shoot in JPEG with a picture profile on it that I like. And I know people joke about the picture profiles. They think that they're corny, but I love them because what I do is I just offload the JPEGs to my phone, share it wherever I want to share it. Boom, done, easy. There's my workflow. Rather than having to put it on my computer, then edit, then apply the edits to everything or a preset. All of that work is done in camera when I have this with me. So I think that's why this has a cult following. A couple of things I didn't love about the X106. First, the menu system is absolutely appalling. <laughs> like, especially for a camera targeted towards the younger generation now, the menu system is straight from the 90s. It's unsearchable. It does not support touch. And it, it's so confusing that even to an old photographer like me who has read the manual and has taught so many different complex cameras, I still found it difficult to do even basic things that required to go into the menus. The good news is you don't often have to go into the menus and you can probably just learn one or two things and do all the shooting you need to do. The other thing is the app. It has a Wi-Fi app for your phone, so you can remotely control it and transfer your files. And I, I did get it to work eventually, <laughs> but it, it was hard and it was flaky. Like I had to manually override the Wi-Fi connection several times before it actually worked. And I got lots of errors that didn't make any sense. And I had to go in and turn security settings off and then back on before it would register it. And it's like, it's like they didn't really test it. And, but it's, it's kind of always been that way. Like the Fuji app will work for a while and then Apple releases an update to iOS and then it seems to break again. And as a result, I've concluded I'm just not gonna use it. So one big advantage of the 6 here is I can use a USB-C cable to connect it directly to my iPhone and copy pictures that way. And it, it works so well, so fast. It works with RAW or JPEG, and you don't have to fuss with the app. So you can't do that with the 5. You can do it with the 6. That's one of the big advantages to me is now I don't need that app anymore. The new 6 adds sensor stabilization, which means you can handhold shots longer. Now they advertise five stops of image stabilization, but in my tests with my hands, that's not what I found. I got about two stops of image stabilization, but still that's a pretty big deal. 
whereas I was able to consistently get shots at about 1 30th on the five, with the six, I was shooting down at 1 8th. And that means you're gathering two stops more light, four times more light. So in low light situations with still subjects, that meant the image quality was much, much better. And there we did see a huge difference in sharpness, not because the lens got sharper, but just because it's gathering that much more light and producing less noisy, more detailed images. So that's a big win. If you're thinking about getting a fun camera that you can just stick in your pocket and bring anywhere, you can find a bunch of options at KEH. They have quite a few of the X100V, they have X-Pros from Fuji, and they also have Leicas if you're looking for a more high-end similar experience. I shoot with the Q2 as well. You can also get actual film cameras <laughs> and run 36 pictures through and then get them developed. And they have an amazing selection of film cameras that are the ultimate in analog photography. They also have a generous return period, so you can make sure that you enjoy your camera before you commit to it. And they have a warranty, so you know that you're getting good quality gear. So check out KEH and use our 5% off coupon right here. And that's something that changes, so make sure to go to the description to get the most up-to-date coupon from us. Thanks so much. One thing that was appealing to me when the new X106 came out was that it boasts 40 megapixels. That's like 50% more megapixels than the X100V or 5, whatever you want to call it. So I was curious to see what the difference in image quality was, especially since it has the same lens. So I took some pictures side by side, I zoomed in, and I didn't see a huge difference. I tried to do it quite scientifically with pictures of words and maps and then real world pictures, seeing if you could tell the difference. Maybe I saw a 10% difference. I don't really know how to quantify it. It wasn't a lot. And sometimes we struggled in the side-by-side -side pictures to really find a difference. So if you're looking for improved image quality only, I, I don't see any reason to update. The autofocus was the main reason I found this a compelling update because now it has way better subject detection. And when I shot the five and the six side by side, often it couldn't really find Tony's face or eye, but this seemed to lock onto his eye more reliably, meaning you'll have more photos and focus. And it appealed to me because often this little joystick here accidentally gets knocked. My autofocus box ends up in some weird place and I'd have a hard time finding focus quickly if there was something cute going on I wanted to capture. So that improved autofocus made my workflow a little bit easier. If you're doing manual focus, that won't matter to you, but that was the biggest improvement I saw from the five to the six. I think the coolest feature of these cameras is the hybrid viewfinder, which switches between electronic, which is at now, and an optical true rangefinder viewfinder. But we have different we, opinions about this. What do you, well, what do you think about it? I like the electronic viewfinder because I like to see what I'm going to get and not as a matter of laziness, but because it just kind of takes me out of the outside world and lets me focus on what I'm looking at through the viewfinder. Yeah. So you get what you see is what you get with the digital version of it, which you just flip this switch. And if you're using a picture profile like aged film or black and white, you see it in the viewfinder. But for me, I don't want to be taken out of the experience. I want to see as few screens as possible. Like that's the reason I'm not using my phone. And when I'm in optical mode, it shows me actually a wider field of view than the picture is going to be. And that helps my composition because I see things that are just outside of the frame. And so I can reframe a little bit. I can even kind of move my face around and peek in the corner some. And I still get the information. I can see the aperture and the shutter speed because it also overlays a little digital information. There's even a, a third mode where it insets a digital picture in the corner. If I want I to manually focus, I can like get precise manual cool. focusing for those times when you want to go fully manual and you want to be precise about it too. I think the nice thing about having the option to do one or the other is that you can use both and often you'll use the EVF to review your photos because sometimes you take a photo and the back of the screen doesn't look that great because it's really bright. So he's able to look through the viewfinder, see if he got the shot that he wants. Yeah. So I am farsighted and I can't always see the back of the screen clearly, but I can put it up here. Even with the optical viewfinder it automatically switches over. It also lets you record and review video and stuff with the viewfinder. So really cool, unique feature. If you, if that sounds great and you want it in an interchangeable lens camera, check out the X-Pro cameras from Fuji because they have the same viewfinder with the X-Mount lenses. Every camera in this series is stills first, but they do include video features. This one isn't much improved. Like it, it will do 6K video, but with a little bit of a crop. The sensor stabilization is probably the biggest improvement to video for video shooters. 
Um, but, but I'll say like, it, it's not very friendly to video shooters. Like there's no record button. You have to kind of reprogram this to be a record button. And if you want to see that subscribe, I have a whole tutorial coming for this camera where I show you exactly how I have it set up. But let's take a look at video clips comparing the X105 and six. So you can get a, a, a grasp on what the actual difference is. Notice the five is really jittery while the six is much smoother. Both are in continuous focus mode, but notice that the five hunts in and out and spends a lot of time in this clip out of focus while the six pretty much stays in focus the entire time. The five is using F-Log while the six is using the newer F-Log 2. That just provides extra dynamic range, which is good for this HDR video. The six also supports HDR video natively, which the five did not do. As we start to move the camera quickly, notice the amounts of rolling shutter. The 6's higher megapixel sensor has a little more rolling shutter, but it, it's fine. It looks natural. People are used to seeing it. So what do you think? Who should buy the X106? I think that if you're interested in a compact camera, you're a Fuji fan, then you should definitely go for this. With the improved autofocus, it makes shooting just a little bit faster. Uh, I did not appreciate a huge image quality difference, so if you don't want to go through the trouble of upgrading, I think you'll still be happy with the X100V. And of course, if you want to save like $100 on a used camera, don't care about slowing down a little bit for that autofocus, I think that the X100V is still a great option uh, but otherwise this is a super fun second shooter for anyone yeah i think even if you have a, a really fancy interchangeable lens camera like i still prefer to use this i take this with me when my other cameras are gathering dust at home like if you're leaving your camera behind when you go out to dinner or go on a quick trip that's a good sign that one of these might really change your photography because you'll use it more and it's not your phone. You're not going to get distractions by it. I think, I think it's brilliant. I, I love the entire series and it's great that they haven't changed that much. So you can go back and get like the first or second generation, still get great pictures with yeah, those. Yeah, a little lower megapixels, like the autofocus isn't as good, but still a fun camera. And I think this camera is all about fun. And actually at KEH right now, they have one X100F, which is an even more previous generation and it's brown and it's really beautiful. And I was looking at it like. <sighs> well, hurry, if you see it, better get it right away. <laughs> Thanks, KEH, for making this video possible. If you're looking for used gear, go there and check out their huge inventory of lenses and cameras and all other photo accessories you can think of. And use our coupon code here to get 5% off. Be sure to check our description for the most up-to-date coupon code. And subscribe because I have a full tutorial for the X106 coming. It's actually pretty complex, so I have a lot of cool tricks that'll make it more fun and easier to use. Bye.